Hi folks, this is uh, Jesse Watson, uh, your art teacher, and tonight we're going to talk about the elements of art versus the principles of art. So the elements of art are the easiest ones to talk about. Um, they're the ones that people know most about. You learn about these usually when you're in kindergarten or first grade as you're doing your art projects and you're drawing and you learn what your colors are and you learn how to draw lines and everything. So um, a lot of people already know about these things, uh, but I wanna talk a little bit about how they're used in art and how you talk about them. Line color and shape are really very basic and most people understand those. Uh, when it comes to value, though, some people do get confused. They don't understand that value in art has nothing to do with money. It has to do with how dark or light your um, shades are. So uh, black is considered a very dark value and white is, is considered a very light value. And you'll see everything in between. Form is only referring to three-dimensional art. So if you're looking at a two-dimensional piece of artwork, a painting, a drawing, a photograph, all of that is two-dimensional art. It doesn't have form. Form is three-dimensional art. So if you have some sort of sculpture made out of clay or bronze or glass or just about any other material, that object has form. Uh, texture and space are also pretty basic. Texture um, is real or invented, so either it's something that you can actually touch and feel, and a lot of times that goes hand in hand with a form if you're talking about a sculpture, or um, an invented texture is one that is an illusion. So it might be a texture that's drawn into a painting, but when you touch it, it's actually just smooth. Uh, space is sort of how you arrange your work and um, whether or not you have objects in certain areas and how you're using your entire canvas or paper or whatever uh, material you're using for creating your art. So those are the easy ones. A little bit more challenging are the principles of design or the principles of art. These are the ones where people start to get confused because in order to really talk about these, you have to already know about the elements of art. Um, when you're talking about these, you are talking about how the elements are used to create these things. So we're going to go through those a little bit more in a minute when we look at our examples. Again, this is uh, what I was just talking about uh, previously. When you're talking about art, you can talk about the elements of art as a standalone subject. You can identify them in artwork, you can just talk about one aspect of them, but when you're talking about the principles of art, it's much more complex, and you're talking about combinations of elements and principles. All right, we're gonna um, practice a little bit by talking about the elements of art in this picture. So in this particular picture, um, you can see that there are a variety of lines. What I see are primarily straight lines, and the straight lines are radiating out from the center of this circle. You can also see uh, the illusion of straight lines with the two light sabers in the middle. You see an outline also of all of the silhouette shapes. The color is very straightforward in this. You can see red, orange, blue, black, white, and a few variations in between. Uh, shape is a little bit more complex. It's sort of mixed in with the line. You can see the outline shape of each of the figures. You can see the outline shape of the lightsabers. You can see the shape of the circle, uh, the Death Star in the background. I like this picture because the value is very clear cut. This white and light gray in the center is a light value. The black, of course, is the darkest value, but all of these values are quite dark as well. Over here, you would consider this sort of a medium value. It's sort of in between the light and dark. This picture has no form. Again, form is when you're referring to three-dimensional art, such as a sculpture. 
The texture in this picture would be considered invented texture, not real texture. If you were to touch it, it would feel smooth. However, you have the illusion of texture with these sort of splatter marks around the top of the picture and toward the bottom here as well. Space is really how your picture is arranged. We have positive space and negative space. And generally, the positive space is going to be the main subjects of your picture. So in this case, it would be the two figures in the front. Negative space would be considered a lot of this background area, in particular this black behind all of the other colors, behind the Death Star, behind the two figures. All right, now for the more complex discussion. We're gonna talk about the principles of art using the same picture. Now we've already talked about the elements of art and how those are incorporated into this artwork. And that's gonna help us when we start to talk about the principles. Now balance is exactly what it means, the principle that holds weight in your picture. So there are a couple of different types of balance. You might have a sort of symmetrical balance. And if you recall, symmetry means the same, and it's usually when you have a mirror image side by side. This has a type of symmetry because you do see one figure on each side. You see crossing lightsabers on each side, and you do see the circle in the middle, which creates radial or round symmetry. So even though it's not an exact mirror image, you do see a lot of symmetry in this picture. That symmetry creates balance. It gives even weight on both sides of the picture, so you don't feel more drawn to one side than the other. It doesn't feel out of balance. Proportion refers to how large or small parts of the picture are in relation to each other. For example, if uh, Darth Vader had a super, super big head, he would be out of proportion because the size of his head would not fit with the size of his body. The proportions of the figures in this picture are even. However, the proportion of the figures to the Death Star in the background are not the same. They are on a different scale. Of course, Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader are not about the same height as the Death Star. They were much smaller. Now, unity and harmony, um, we usually talk about together because they're so similar. Unity means the picture is unified. It's one picture that all goes together. Harmony means it blends, it's harmonious, sort of like music when you have notes that go together, it's called harmony. When you have notes that don't go together, it's called dissonance. Now we don't use dissonance in visual arts, but you would certainly recognize when you saw a piece of art that just didn't look like it went together. There are a lot of things that contribute to the harmony in this picture. One of the main things is the unification of colors in here. You can see we have the same colors in the silhouettes of the bodies as the colors in the background. You can also see unity by using the balance or the symmetry of the figurines. I want you to notice that when we're talking about unity and harmony, we're talking about it in relation to other principles and elements of art. When you're talking about unity and harmony, you can say, well, it just seems to go together, but it's more useful to recognize why it goes together. Now, variety is exactly what it seems. It means having differences in your artwork. It's mixing things up a little bit. You can see that we have a variety of colors. Um, we have the blue and the red and the yellow. We have a variety of lines coming through. We have some straight lines radiating out, but we also have some curved lines coming off of the back of Darth Vader. Now, movement is a hard concept to understand in art. Movement is not just having things move in art, although that is a factor. Movement is also how your eye is guided through the picture. How do the lines and shapes move your eye through? When you have very distinct lines like this, your eye might be guided from Darth Vader's arm up to the end of his lightsaber. 
it might also go from Luke Skywalker's arm to the end of his lightsaber. But if you look at the way the lines are portrayed in this piece of artwork, you can see that your eyes are really going all over the place. Your eyes might be drawn out this way because of these lines or this way because of these lines. Um, movement is portrayed in a lot of different ways. It's not always lines. Sometimes you will see movement because of the way values are used in the picture and a very dark value might draw your eye initially and then your eye moves because it starts going toward a lighter value. Rhythm and pattern. Um, when you're talking about pattern, it's, it's very easy because uh, a, an easy example is a tile floor. You've seen black and white tile floors and all of the tiles in are in a pattern of alternating black and white. That's a very simple example. Patterns create rhythm. But you do not have to have a pattern to show rhythm. Rhythm can be shown in other ways. For example, there is a rhythm of lines coming out from the sides, radiating from this image here. Um, other than that, there are not very many patterns in this particular piece of artwork. The last one is contrast. My favorite type of contrast is contrast in value or dark and light. Contrast is simply referring to differences in art. You can have differences in size, for example, big and small. You can have differences in color, differences in value or dark and light. You can have differences in uh, line. You might have all straight lines in one area and all curvy lines in another area. Um, so just look for differences in art and you will see contrast. The greatest contrast in this piece of artwork is the very light circle form of the Death Star with the silhouettes of the colors over the top of it. All right, that is all for our discussion about the um, elements and principles of art. So now I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have.